Welcome back to Silent Hill Downpour. In the last episode, we were doing some sort of random side questy stuff, trying to unlock more shortcuts by giving the the warm coat to the homeless person, and we also gave him the uh, fishing rod as well, which unlocked everything that can be unlocked through them. So we've unlocked all sorts of stuff, some little side quests around the place, and looked at some shadow sigil stuff, although it didn't really make any progress on that. Found a weird safe and started exploring the, like, lakeside district, or port side district, whatever this place is called. Anyway, I took the shortcut here, which, if you remember, took me north of this big bridge here, when I hadn't even fully explored south of the big bridge. So, I'm just kind of gonna run my way back until I find where I was before. There's obviously something inside of here. I went in there like for two seconds just so the game would save because it saves when you enter a new load zone. But I'll go there once I come across this place naturally. Yeah, it's just run. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Is the shortcut the only way to get across the bridge then? Well, I guess there's that other street. Preston Avenue? Huh. Okay. I love those sounds. Very calming, actually. Water lapping around. Seagulls. The water sounds like it's just, like, right there, but it's not. It's actually down there quite a ways. Okay. Let's see if the other way can take us back. Oh my god. How do you get back if not through the shortcut? You, surely you don't have to use the shortcut. Huh. I guess I'll just explore what I have access to then. <laughs> Forget going back to where I was. No license plate. Okay, I see the enemies are not bugged anymore. They're the ones that actually attack me. Yes. You know... Maybe we'll explore this place after all. to this part of the game without already having one. Maybe it's a hint that you might need to use one soon? Frying pan. <laughs> I'm good with my axe. this picture. There's an upside down picture. Let's get that out of the way. Something change? What? Huh. 
Up back to a normal mirror. I did it, it sounded like a drawer changed or something. doing it again. So there's a lot of stuff you can mess with, right? You can open that drawer over there. I can, I'm pretty sure I can flip the painting. You can turn on the TV. You can turn on and off the light. Do I need to like match what's in the mirror or something? And, oh, and I can light this candle as well. I probably need to match it. Okay. So let's see what it shows. It shows the drawer being open. Yeah. The drawer's open, the TV's off, the light's off, the candle's off. It's just the drawer. And the painting is also still upside down in the picture. But it definitely shows the drawer as open. Whoa. So that reset the drawer, and now it shows the TV on. Oh, now the painting's up? Ah, the candle now. Ah, oh, you can just barely see it at the corner there. Yeah, so I think the lighter, because this is so far into the game, like, I'm pretty sure, don't you have to have the lighter at this point in the game? I'm pretty sure you do. That means, I think, oh. Oh, it's only in the mirror. Okay. Got it just by accident. I'll take it. <laughs> That's cool, it breaks and there's a special room behind it. That's really cool. Yeah, what was I saying? I was saying something and then I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, so I think they're, them providing the lighter was purely... There's a note in the ground. I think it was purely uh, a hint that you're gonna need to use one. Silent Hill Psychiatric Health Center, patient name... Oh. Patient name Malone, DA. The patient is a young Caucasian woman, age 20, of good physical health, with no abnormalities in her medical or mental health history. She initially came to my office after a recommendation from her family doctor, complaining of insomnia, exhaustion, and depression. Subter recently lost a sibling, older sister, but refuses to divulge further details. After further interviews, I have diagnosed the patient as suffering from acute obsessive compulsive disorder. The patient describes recurring nightmares, anxiety, fits of anger, and panic attacks stemming from the irrational belief that if she does not conduct mundane, repetitive rituals around her home, the people in the mirror will cause her physical harm. Sending a recommendation to the patient's GP that she is suffering from OCD along with possible schizophrenia, advising further tests and possible antipsychotic medication. Dr. Ari Richman, Silent Hill Psychi Psychiatry and Family Counseling. Recurring, yeah, uh, irrational, irrational belief that if she does not conduct mundane, repetitive rituals around her home, the people in the mirror will cause her physical harm. Would those rituals be turning on and off stuff and, like, making the painting right side up or not? Although in this case, I did the repetitive rituals and it definitely caused harm. 
Or maybe it stopped it when I finished, when I finally lit that thing over there. I think it did, sort of, I don't know, because I also killed them. Oh, two medical kits. That is incredibly good. I was almost out. Now I've got three. Oh my god, two things of pistol bullets, too. Okay, out of this building, can't go down to the bridge, can't go down Ash Ketchum Street. I guess we go... This way? Isn't this where I came from with a shortcut, though? Those really are lovely noises. Oh. Quite hard enough to use another med kit. I was thinking that a good combat um, strategy for those enemies might be to not really block, but more kind of run away and bait them into attacks, and then once they do attack, suddenly turn around and try to <laughs> swipe at them. And the reason is because I fought one of those harder enemies, um, the ones that sometimes have weapons. They're like Wolverine boxers with no shirts, much stronger. I fought one of those off camera and. I found that trying to bait it into an attack and then trying to hit it as it's approaching you was a really good way to fight it. But it doesn't look like that's the case at all for these types of enemies because they tend to lunge and they tend to do lots of small attacks, whereas the other enemies tend to do fewer big attacks. One of these days I'll be able to light these candles. Yeah, lovely ambiance out here. Ooh. Do you think that's the boat that I have the keys for? I think this is where I came out. Yeah, the Port District shortcut. This is where I first came into this place from. And then just headed straight that way, so... Uh, I guess we gotta go this way unless we want to go back, and I don't want to go back. I also need to keep in mind that there should be somewhere to spread those ashes around. Remember we have that photograph of that special place? Yeah, this one here. Obviously a dock. There's like... Okay, so it's a dock, there's lights, and there's like little stringers run between the lights. That should be probably the easiest to identify thing, this, the stringers. In fact, those are them. But I don't think this is the place. No, this looks sort of like a junction. There's a corner over there on the left side. Oh, another one of the birds. That's two out of five, I think. Poor little guy. I want to see the end of that memory. Just get little fragments of it. What was that to pick up? Pick up what? Oh. 
Guess that's not our boat. Oh, that's probably it. Okay, well, there's no way we can just leave in the boat and that's the end of the game, right? I mean, obviously not. So, what's the problem? Is it, like, missing fuel or something? I'm slightly worried I just ended the game. I don't think so. I hope not. You gotta be kidding me. Did you really think it could end like this? After everything you saw back there, everything we've been through, you think going back to prison is all that's at stake here? We're not going to Wayside. What are you saying? Turn the boat around. Are you out of your mind? We're free! When we reach the opposite shore, I'll go one way, you can go the other. It's that easy. We've got unfinished business, you and I. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, and honestly, I don't care anymore. There is no way in hell I'm going back. It wasn't a request. We've both just been through hell. Haven't you been paying attention? No, you haven't been paying attention. You think this is all an accident? Just a big coincidence? This town, it knows me. It showed me things. It wants me to finish this. Don't you understand? It'll never let us go until we finish what we started. What you started. I told you. I'm not going back. You might as well shoot me. Fine. How's it going, Murph? Heard you're gonna be leaving us soon. What do you want, Sewell? You weren't thinking of leaving before you paid back my favor, were you? Napier. <laughs> what am I talking about? Of course you're gonna keep your end of the deal. You're a real stand-up guy, Murphy. Parole report says so right there in black and white. A model prisoner, right? Sure it would be awful if they found out about what you did to that child bugger and bastard, though, wouldn't it? I mean, shit. That would ruin everything, wouldn't it? What do you want me to do? What you're good at, of course. Ridding the world of monsters. I got another one for you. Who is it? Don't worry yourself about the details, Cupcake. Just take out the garbage like you did before and we'll be square. When? There's gonna be a little disturbance tonight. The other guards and me are gonna have our hands full, so no one's gonna notice when you head down to the showers and find your guy waiting there, just like last time. And then? Oh, I think you know what comes next. Unless, of course... You're thinking of breaking our deal. And this other guy, he deserves it? Oh, Murph, you have no idea how bad he deserves it. Hell, I only wish I could do it myself. So, what do you say, Cupcake? You gonna play ball? I'll take care of it. Welcome home. 
Murder is a mortal sin. You know what I'm saying? Bring shit to the before us, man. It doesn't matter what you want. We allow ourselves to see them. Okay, I have a hunch about the person in the wheelchair. We've been seeing them all over the place. We've been sort of chasing them? Sort of? The entire game? Or at least they've been present around us the entire game? Seen them in front of us, we've seen their tracks all over the place. This favor for Sewell. Go kill this person in the showers again. Yeah, they're definitely a monster. Don't worry about the details. That little thing, don't worry about the details. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Murphy killed someone who's not really guilty at all. Perhaps one of the people that was investigating Sewell. Remember we read that file about Sewell being under investigation? Because they've been a, you know, a dirty prison guard for a long time, and it's been known that they're very suspicious. And I'm thinking maybe we didn't succeed at killing that person, but we horribly maimed them, and maybe that's them in the wheelchair, or, you know, a, a monstrous version of them. Escape from the prison. How far are we... Like, I'm gonna get to go back to the town, right? How far are we in the game? Like, second bird released? That's 70% progress? 72% progress in the cell? Yeah, this can't be the end of the game. This isn't the end of the game. I hope. Oh, right, I don't have a flashlight. Do I have any inventory? No. Seven PM showers, be ready, Sewell. Probably need to help that along. go there though what's over this way lots and lots of floors okay let's go to the center Must have been the disturbance. I just heard another Wilhelm scream. Come on, Murphy, hold it together, man.
nice. Perfect. I need another key card. Another key card? When did I use the first key card? I need to unlock it. How do I get the damn thing open? It's in a locked gun rack. Psychological report from Dr. Wayne Sarah to Garden Glenn Milton. Subject's name crossed out. Initial psychological evaluation slash profile. Something something is a male, something years old. He's serving a something year sentence for two, two, two and two, two, two. He appears to be in excellent physical health. We briefly discussed his past as well as the events that led to his incarceration. They maintain a soft-spoken and somewhat introverted demeanor, yet appear to be cognizant of his crimes and able to serve his sentence without causing any trouble or displaying resistance. For these reasons, I recommend he be approved for placement in general population. Respectfully submitted by Dr. Wayne Sarah, Chief Psychiatrist, Ryall State Prison. Insert code. Hey, this is the exact same configuration as that weird safe back in that house, except it doesn't have the weird voltmeter thing. Also, why is it like pitch black? That's probably a rendering bug. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. Oh, that's probably the code, isn't it? Yep, that's five numbers. Marty Kaysen. Ah, okay, I think I figured the whole thing out. So I did enter the code 23643, but that did nothing, and I realized that's because, well, why would I need to enter this random person's code? Marty Kaysen? I don't know who the hell that is. I'm supposed to enter mine, I think, and how do I get it? It's on my damn jacket. 11... 752. I think I've understood the very, very, very odd rules of this safe. So we can entirely ignore the top left and the bottom right one. Those you can independently move in increments of one, so easy. These three ones are a very, very strange the way they behave. They usually, except for some kind of strange exceptions, move in increments of two, but this one moves in increments of two starting on an odd number, so it always moves between odd numbers. This middle one moves in increments of two between even numbers. And this knob up here turns all three of them. And it doesn't turn all three of them the same direction. Notice I'm doing this clockwise. The middle one turns clockwise with it, but the bottom left one turns count uh, counterclockwise. So, <laughs> with all these weird, weird rules in mind, it probably won't be too hard. So we can ignore the first and the last number. So we need the middle three to be one, seven, five. One, seven, five. So. Right, so this one needs to be five, but it always is on an odd number anyway, so we don't need to do anything special for that. We can just tweak that at the end. Yeah, the five won't be any problem, so we need one and a seven. The seven is going to be the problem, because this one only goes between even numbers. Unless... Unless uh, we turn it with this. So this, which turns all three, is going to be used to set that one to seven. They both turn clockwise. We need this one to be a one. So let's put that on... Eight. We're going to turn it counterclockwise, so we need a counterclockwise turn to turn this one to... i got to keep looking over. A seven, which means we need to be... Here? Right? Yeah, and then we turn this one back to one, so now it's one seven. Yeah. There we go. And then we should just be able to set the rest independently. So it's got to be one one. So one one, seven five and two. Is that a key? Small key, probably for the gun rack? A quarter dollar? Could be handy. What a weird coin. Quarter dollar, 25, that doesn't look like any... 
Doesn't look like any quarter that I've ever seen. both. Is it loaded? It is. We've got five shots of the shotgun. There's our flashlight. You don't need these anymore, do you? Oh, and an access card. That's cool. They put in the sound of the pipes, like, expanding and contracting. Oh, I missed this. I think it's a map. Nice. <laughs> Overlook Penitentiary. Because we care. Yes, that's why prisons are run, because people care. No member of prison guard squad may leave the prison without the direct consent of his commanding officer. Yeah, it's not a forensic flashlight, so I can't do UV. Pistol and shotgun rounds. Oh, hey, I just realized when I get out of prison, I better get my old inventory back. I want my gold gun back. I worked hard for that. Let's turn that thing on so we can tell when enemies are near. They're near. Wing B, is that where the note said we're supposed to go? No, it just says showers. They're dead. That's not a flushable toilet. That eerie blue glow. Hmm, handwritten. From Ricky. Babe, well, another day, another letter from this hellhole. It's been eight months now since I got locked up, and it seems like things only get worse. I knew some rough guys on the outside, but none of them come close to the freaks in here. I'm talking i I'm talking stone cold fucking killers, rapists, even sick ass child molesters. And the worst of all are the guards. I swear there ain't a straight fucking one in the bunch. Just assholes with badges who get their rocks off knocking around the inmates. I always thought getting ass raped by some dude was gonna be what I had to worry about in here. No one said nothing about having to watch my back for dumbass crooked um uh, Crooked 
What does that say? Can't wait to get it out from here and back to you. Just four more months. Love forever, Ricky. Probably need to head down. Oh, hi. Okay, so here I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to use my strategy of trying to bait an attack. Okay, it didn't work there. Didn't work too bad. Thanks. 